from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Imagine. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown Seattle at the AWS Imagine EDU event. It's their education event, and every, education everything from K through 12 to higher education, community college, retraining after uh, service. It's a really great show. It's the second year, we're happy to be here. We've got somebody who's come all the way from Spain to talk about his very special company. It's Ignasi. Nuguez, he is the CEO of Click.edu, correct? Yeah, nice right. To, nice to uh, see you, welcome. Thank you, and uh, we are really pleased to be here with you. Great, so tell us kind of what is Click.edu? What, what is uh, kind of your core value? Yeah, it's uh, a platform that makes all the things that a school needs, in at least in Spain. So it's a MIS system, also an LMS, also the communication with the families, etc., is a way to manage all the school and also a lot of things that they are related on. Right, and you've been around for a while, so when did the company start? How, give us kind of some basic numbers on how many customers do you have, because you operate in a lot of countries, a lot of schools. Yes, we have uh, schools working with us uh, already in all of Spain, also in Chile, Colombia, and also in UK and also in a little country in Europe that is called Andorra. So okay. we are really happy because we have more than one million of users working with us. One million, yeah. great, congratulations. So and is it mainly, do you specialize between say K through 12 or higher education or are yes, you kind of all over the place? Yes, we are focusing K-12 schools. So the, one of the important parts are the communication with parents and to follow all the things that the student does. Right, so you guys have a very special thing that you're announcing here at the show, is, is really focusing on Alexa for K through 12, which nobody else is doing. That's really something unique that you guys, how did you get in that? What did you see in voice communication in Alexa that you couldn't do in the platform before that you really saw the opportunity? Yes, all the people say is that the future or the present now is the voice and all we will communicate uh, by voice in the future over internet. You see a lot of uh, uh, young guys doing all the things by voice, not right. Right, texting, etc. So we thought that it could be a nice idea that the communication between parents and also for students to the school and be and in the other way could be could be by voice. Right. So we imagined how to do it and we did it. And it's did, really when, new. When did you start it? When did you start that project? This project mm -hmm. we began uh, three uh, months ago. Oh, uh, three months ago. So you yeah, just it's young. really, really new. The <laughs> the voice idea. Right, yeah, right. It was in a show that I have seen. Uh, a lot, a lot of people were talking about that, but there were at least in Spain, in Spanish, nothing about. So we said we can be the first, so we did it. That's great. So before we turn the cameras on, we were talking about some of the issues that you have, and one of the ones is integration to all these systems because, you know, I have kids, I might have multiple kids in a couple different grades, you have kids, and if I'm looking for access on their homework or their test scores, you know, you've got to integrate with all those different back ends to keep things private. But you're kind of in a good spot because your system is the one that's on the back end, right? Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> so that works pretty well. And then the other piece you talked about is two-way voice. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people think in voice communication yet. It's still more of, a, of an ask and get a reply, ask and, and get a reply. But you guys are actually pushing notifications from the school out to the families yeah. using voice. How's that working out? How, you know, what are some of the use cases uh, yeah, for that? Yeah, it's, li it's like the parent can ask to Alexa, uh, for example, what's the homework for tomorrow for one of your son or daughter? And, uh, and uh, Echo uh, tell you about that. So it's really impressive because it, in that moment, the system goes to the, to the school system to get that information. Which is and, your system. Yeah, and, uh, and Alexa right. uh, translates in voice. Right, so right. yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's it, funny. It, it's, I just think it's funny that I get emails from all my digital assistants yeah. telling me, suggesting things that I should ask them. Yeah. Because it's really not native 
yet as, a, as an interface to work yeah. with these machines. But what you mentioned, look, the young people voice is much more natural. So I wonder if there's been some surprises or some things you didn't expect in terms of people's comfort level with voice as a way to communicate with these systems. Yeah, I think it's the most natural way. Also for us that we are not native, but of course we communicate better by voice and writing or texting. So, so of course it's the future because it's a natural way. So the, the use of that systems goes up uh, because of that, so I think it's the most, uh, yeah, the the most thing that for, perhaps is more surprising. Right, and so will you guys supply the Alexa for people's homes, or is it just something they can tap into their existing Alexa? Yeah, yeah uh, usually uh, the case for using that is in your home or also on your phone, so you can install Alex on your phone and you can ask them as if uh, it, you have an echo. But how, so, do I, but how do I hook how do I hook my existing echo yeah, yes, up of course. to the school system? Yes, because sometimes uh, some universities, uh, they uh, put their echo in the, I don't know, in the university, etc. Right, right. But you can use your echo that you are using in for other things, listen music, listen music, and music then, or whatever, right. and you can use the same, it. yeah, you can, you only have to like download an app right. for your phone, no, it's more or less it's the same, you ask Alexa to install ClickEdu app or a skill that is how it's called, right. and then you, you have it. <laughs> so what's next, what's on the roadmap? On, on the voice specifically, where do you see this kind of evolving over the next little while? Yes, our, our next goal in that part is that they can use the teachers in the school, the boy systems also. So for doing what they do every day in uh, more writing or whatever, uh, we can do it by voice. For example, an interview with the parents, a transcript, or for example, to say that somebody hasn't come to the school or to tell to the transportation that something ha is happening. Uh, this kind of things is what we are imagining. It's in our next things that we will do with right. voice. So it'll be Alexa in the classroom, helping yeah, out in the classroom, this is what not I just thinking. at home. Yeah. Right. What about privacy? I would imagine, you know, it's funny, in the early days of cloud, security was, a, was, a, was not good. It was a showstopper, people were concerned. Right, 10 years later, now security is a strength of cloud, right? It's probably more secure than most people's data centers or disgruntled employees. I would imagine privacy and security is, is probably pretty top of mind in the school districts as well. There's a lot of personal information. Are, are they comfortable? Do they kind of get the security of cloud and cloud infrastructure? Or is that still a sticking point? You know that in Europe there are a really strict law about protection of data. Right. So we are really concerned about that. So we are talking with the schools what kind of systems they will be comfortable because we want to use it. So we will have to find the clue to do that. <laughs> but it's really important, uh, uh, I think, all over the world. But uh, in the States or in Europe, we are really concerned about that. So we'll see how to find it, but we can create a private skill. Right. Yes, because there are a version of Alexa that is for business. So you can create your own private things and you don't have to be fair that somebody's listening to you. Right, all right. So last, last question, here at the conference, did you come last year? Uh, no. So what are you, you know, just your impressions of the conference, how is it nice to be with a bunch of like-minded, you know, kind of forward-thinking yeah. uh, educators? Because education doesn't always get the best reputation yeah. for being kind of forward-looking. Yeah. But here you're surrounded. So I just wonder if you could share some of your thoughts of the, uh, of the event so far. Yeah, I think this kind of events give you more motivation and you increase your your way to see to see that there are a lot of people that is pushing to innovate and do the, the things different. So really, really interesting to go to some you know, machine learning uh, exposition about California, what they are doing, etc. So. I am really interested. Good, good. All right. Well, Ignacy, thanks for taking a few minutes and uh, and congratulations on, on that project. That's really crazy. Thank you for <laughs> your interest. Yes. All right. He's All right. Ignacy, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at AWS Imagine in downtown Seattle. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.